Hello friends, welcome back to Lynn's Handmade Designs YouTube channel where I show you how to do all of my patterns start to finish with a full video tutorial. Introducing the Fiona fold over for the summer. I don't know about you guys, but my kids are home for the summer and I need a quick project. That's this. Not only is she cute, she's fast. So um, you'll notice on the front it has that fold over design, but it's a faux fold over. So this portion is a usable zipper pocket, which I do love. Um, it does not go all the way down and you're not looking into the deep abyss of a bag with a true fold over. So that's why it's kind of a faux fold over design, but full usable pocket. Inside she is deceptively roomy. I have a full size book in here, some keys, phone, purse bell, a little coffee sleeve, and then a nice sized interior zipper pocket. In the video, I do show you how to use these invisible hidden snaps so that you can kind of get into your bag and then let it just drop and naturally find its mate in the magnetic portion of it. Otherwise, I do show you how to install a standard magnetic snap, which is a lot stronger if you are worried about um, your bag staying securely closed. You'll want to do a standard magnetic snap, but she's a cutie. So gather those supplies and come make one with me today. Alrighty, so before we jump in and start sewing, I do want to talk about um, the material choices for this pattern. Now, um, the main body of the bag, you want it to have some nice structure, but you also don't want it to be so thick in the top edges that um, your machine has a, a difficulty time sewing around the final top stitch. So I, for this one I've chosen, um, it's kind of a faux suede, it's got a nice temper to it that I've chosen not to interface it. I'm also going to be using some waterproof canvas for the lining that will help with the structure of that main body but not um, need any extra interfacing. For the zippered pocket, I did take my quilt cotton and I added a um, medium weight woven interfacing to give that um, a nice feel so it's almost comparable to this feel after the interfacing is applied. Um, we, I, I decided to use the print as well for the interior pocket, so I'll just have a little pop of some fun color inside. Now, you don't have to use a vinyl cork or leather for the main body like I am. I've just chosen to use that for today's bag, but I did call for a small amount of vinyl cork and leather for the zipper overlay, which will be on the interior portion of the bag, and also so that you can cut out little um, strap ends here if you're using fun woven webbing for our strap. This is the kind of webbing that you can't heat seal, so we have to trim down these frays, and then when we wrap this around, it gives it a nice clean finish. But I figure with the amount of these small shops carrying amazing, fun webbing, why not up our bag game with some really cool webbing instead of having to make it ourselves. Now, back to this main body piece. I did not add any type of interfacing to this, as you can see. But if you're using quilt cotton or anything lightweight or something really drapey, you will need to add interfacing to this. However, if you're using the hidden magnetic snaps, as I will be using today, they start off very strong. You can see they naturally come together. But the more layers you add between these two magnets, the less magnetized they become. So you want to keep that in mind when you're choosing your materials. So although I did not add interfacing to this piece, if you were gonna do the fusible fleece like I do recommend for a quilt cotton, you will want to trim it so that it is cut from the seam allowance, so it's not gonna get caught in the seam allowance, but you're also gonna cut the hole where your hidden magnetic snap's gonna go to again, reduce those layers for the magnet. So keep that in mind when you are choosing your materials. Now you'll notice as I flip this over that I did add the magnet placement marks onto the back of my uh, main body here and then also to the back side of one of the, the under portion of the zippered flap. So I added those so you're going to take your pattern piece and transfer the markings um, to the back side of that. But if you're doing a standard magnet, which I will show you how to also install, those markings will go on the front of those materials. So keep that in mind. I've also went ahead and added all of the center markings on all my main body pieces, also to the um, zippered flap pieces and the pockets. Now today I'm using um, not so much a directional fabric. I don't really feel there's a right way or a wrong way to display these, this floral print. So it's not gonna make a difference on the front portion of my flap or the underside, which way it goes. But for the written instructions, I did intentionally use a directional print and a feature 
so that you can be mindful of how you're assembling this flap so that the magnet's in the correct spot when you fold it up, but also your design is not upside down or cut off with the fold of the flap. So just kind of want to talk about that pattern piece right here. So once you print it out, there's this gray box that you can cut away so that you can center it on a feature fabric. If yours is non-directional, I would encourage you not to cut out the box because it is easier to work with the pattern piece without this giant hole cut out. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, this window so that I can show you what I mean about featuring a certain type of fabric. Okay, so as you can see, I've cut out the, the window, but it does make it a much more floppy. So it's a little bit harder to work with, especially if you're gonna trace around or hold it down. To cut but the beauty of that little window is it will account for the fold of the flap and the seam allowance so that you can find your feature that you want to fit perfectly on the center of your bag so if I love these four right there then I'll know that if I cut my pattern piece like this then that will be front and center I won't accidentally cut off Princess Peach's head when it folds over the bag now I did call for zipper by the yard and so that we can cut them down to the exact sizes that we need. For the longer zipper that's going to be on the zippered flap, I will go ahead and thread on a zipper pull. For the smaller zipper that's going on the interior zipper pocket, go ahead and leave that zipper pull off for now because it's easier to sew the liners onto it without the pull in the way. Now if you know me at all, I love to get my strap done and out of the way so that at the final step of the actual bag construction, all we have to do is add our strap and you know you're truly done. So right now we're going to go ahead and get our strap out of the way. So as you can see today, I did choose to use that really pretty woven webbing, but it is fraying pretty bad. So what we need to do is trim off these um, frays and then that's where these little extra um, ends come in place. So I've added some double-sided tape to the edges, the long edges here, so that I can just simply fold them over the raw edges of my webbing here. Now, if you are just using like a nylon or um, polyester webbing that you can heat seal, all you need to do is just run a lighter over it. It heat seals it just fine. This just gives us a nice finished look. So I'm gonna add that to both ends and then we'll go ahead and take it over to the sewing machine and sew these strap ends on and then add our hardware. Now that we've added the nice strap ends here and we've finished those ends, we're gonna grab the remaining hardware we're gonna need for the straps. I've got the two one and a half inch swivel clasps and a strap adjuster. So we're gonna start with the strap adjuster and take one of the loose ends here and we're gonna thread it from the back side up over the top, over the center bar and wrap it around here. Now I'm gonna go ahead into the sewing machine and I'm just gonna go ahead and sew around this box again to secure this in place. The one thing I really like about this strap end is because it's now definitely reducing bulk. I do not have to do a double fold and try and sew through all those layers. That would be really thick and you might get some um, pushback from your machine trying to sew through that layer. With um, the nylon or polyester webbing, you just heat seal it. You can just leave it like that and sew or you can do a single fold. So off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and sew around this box, but if you're choosing to do rivets, I would recommend that you go ahead and punch your holes through the strap ends, but not punch holes through a woven webbing like this because um, you don't wanna break those threads. You wanna actually just thread them in between the weave if you can. Here you can see I've gone ahead and tacked it and I just sewed over that bottom row of stitching here. So now make sure you have the right side versus the wrong side. I'm using the more white side as my front. This is still pretty, but this is gonna be the back side. So now we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and flip it so that that wrong side is face up. And we're gonna take the other loose end and put one of the swivel clasps face down and thread it all the way up here. 
So once that is threaded there, you're going to take that loose end and you're going to come on the right hand side of the center bar here, go from the bottom up, around the top bar, and back down. So now we have the pretty side and the right side um, all going along this top. Now my strap adjuster here is slightly curved. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is kind of curved like this. So the curve goes along the outside. So the swivel clasp is on one end, we've got our strap adjuster, and now we're gonna go ahead and just take the loose end of this and wrap it around for the second swivel clasp. I'm just gonna go ahead and tack it right here as well. Look at that pretty strap. That is a statement piece if I've ever seen one. Now the strap is done, so we're gonna move on to the next step. For this next step, we have to prep our D-ring tab, so I'm gonna flip it to the wrong side and go ahead and draw that center line going up the length here on the back side. That just helps me eyeball it better to fold these long edges into this. So I'm just gonna use some double-sided tape because it's not going to be in my seam allowance. I will be sewing the edges and this tape will be along the center. So you could just use a craft glue stick to hold these to the center. Um, pressing it with your iron will kind of set that glue and it also holds it in place as well. All right, so just fold that long edge straight to the line. I'm going to head to the sewing machine and I'm just going to sew an eighth inch from each long folded edge. Now this is straight quilt cotton, so I did add the woven interfacing to the back side of this, but I want you to be mindful of the materials you are using for your D-ring tabs because um, once you thread this through, you're technically going to be going through four layers of your material here and then the two layers of the main body and the lining. So that area can be an area of concern as far as bulk goes. So just be mindful of what you're choosing for this portion. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold this piece in half and cut it into two pieces. Then I'm going to take one of the D-rings with the seam side up and thread it with the point to the back side. We'll thread it on each of these pieces. Now I do like to add my glue to this or double-sided tape depending on your material. Um, add a layer of the glue and then pinch it over and, and, and clip it so that it has a chance to dry. Now I'm using a narrow D-ring with a very narrow opening so actually getting it to twist with use is, is going to be difficult. But if you're using a standard D-ring with a giant hole, its natural tendency is to always want to turn to the path of least resistance when you've got tugging from the top. So by gluing these together, it will also help to ensure that the D-ring isn't twisting. Now that we've given it a chance to dry, I'm going to go ahead and mark from this bottom raw edge a half inch up. This will be my landmark for where I'm putting it in the side of the bag so that it's equal on both sides. This is a non-removable marking pen, but this will be um, hidden inside the bag, so uh, I don't mind that it's not removable. All right, so now this step is done. Set them aside and we'll move on. All righty, next step that tends to intimidate a lot of people, but they're actually, it's not that bad. So when you order hidden magnetic snaps, it typically comes with some sort of plastic backing that it's encased in. So you're not removing this. You need this in order to sew it to your project. If you're worried about sewing this perfect circle, which can be intimidating, but I'm gonna show you tips that give me the best results, you certainly can sew a square box. It's, it's not gonna make or break your project. So what I did right now is I did add some double-sided tape to the flat portion because it's domed on the one side, but it is the flat sides that are magnetic. So when you do get your package of snaps, make sure that they're not repelling each other and that you've got two magnets that are supposed to go together. So I verified that these go together. Now for this portion, like I said, we're going to install them on the wrong sides of the, this will be the under portion of the zippered flap. And this is the front side, the back side of the front side of the bag. 
say that 10 times fast. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel off the paper backing here on my double-sided tape. I'm not sewing the box, I'm sewing the circle. So that will be out of my seam allowance. And I'm just gonna center it right on those, those lines. Just like that. Now, if you are doing a standard magnet, I will jump to that just a moment to show you how to just generally install a normal magnet. So stay with me for a moment here. Another option, um, one of my testers did buy these really strong disc magnets off of Amazon, and she just sandwiched them between two pieces of interfacing and then sewed around the interfacing, and she said her magnet was really strong. So another option for you if you've got those laying around. So before we get started, I do want to swap out to a really narrow foot. I want something that's going to get me as close to this magnet as possible. So I'm going to remove my standard foot and go ahead and put on this zipper foot. Now if you're someone who likes to use a pretty long um, stitch length, this is the time you are going to want to drop it down a little bit so that you can keep a really tight curve. The longer the stitch length, the more jaggedy your curve is going to be as you go around this disc magnet. So, and also this is metal, so it's going to want to stick. But the nice thing is it does kind of hold it in that general position. It's just going to be up to you to keep rotating your panel as you sew it. So I put my needle down right next to the magnet, and then I'm going to pedal really slow so that I can just continuously turn this as I'm stitching. Instead of doing a back stitch where you're going to see a, like a bulky area of stitching, I'm going to leave my thread tails long and then I'm going to pull them to this back side and knot them off so it'll look like one continuous stitch. Oh, it did get away from me a little bit. You can see it jutted out there a little bit. Hmm, I might seam rip that. I might redo that. And I can because this is quilt cotton. If I would have started on this one, that would have probably been a problem. So, note to you, start with the um, piece that is not vinyl if you're doing that. All right, take two. I like that better. Nothing says you have to leave it the first go. So, when I talk about leaving the thread tails long and I give it a gentle tug, you'll see that it forms this loop here. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and pull off to the back side. And these are what I'm going to knot off so that it's got a clean finish on this front. Okay, Steph chastised me last time for going too fast. I thought you were going too fast. All right, we're going to go slower. And again, it kind of like is sticking to the magnet underneath. So you're, you're kind of fighting it. Go slow. If you want to hand crank, great. Otherwise, I'm going to try and go slower. <laughs> All right. Before I get to this one, I want to give that that gentle tug here and see if I can pull that out. Anytime you do a stop when you're doing one of these stitches, make sure your needle's in the down position so it doesn't move out of place on you. All right, so now I got that here. Okay, I'm just going to hand crank these last few. If you want to hand crank the whole thing, again, nothing wrong with that. Especially on the vinyl. How do we do? Not bad. Just got to pull this thread to the backside and knot it off. Go to your home. Yay. Alrighty, if you've already done the hidden magnetic step along with me, you can jump ahead to the next portion of the video. Otherwise, Real quick, I'm going to show you how to install a standard magnet if you prefer that route. So like I mentioned in the beginning, on your main body pieces, your markings will be on the front portion of your materials here. So I'm, I grabbed a scrap piece of this uh, main body material I'm using. It feels really nice. There's no stretch. 
nice tempered to it. So I didn't add any interfacing to this, just as I didn't to that portion. But you're gonna go ahead and take the washer that your magnet comes with and you're gonna center it over the marking from the pattern piece um, onto your materials. And then you're gonna draw those lines where the washer prongs go, just like that. So then you're gonna take your seam ripper, pop it in there and cut your slit. So if this was quilt cotton, you would be going through fusible fleece, probably a woven interfacing as well. So you've got some good stability, but you're gonna go ahead and take the um, magnetic snap and push the prongs through from the front side to the back side. Now, the male portion, which is the portion that sticks out a little bit, is gonna go on the zippered flap. The female portion has the concave, that's gonna go on the main body here. So once you've pushed your prongs through to the back side, you're gonna go ahead and take that washer. You can, like I said, you could cut little pieces of Peltex or Decala Light or fuse it there if you're worried about the prongs pushing. Now I know that there's the age old question, do you push the prongs in or do you push them out? And sometimes I think it's a personal preference thing, but for me personally, I find I get a stronger grab when they're clamped over each other. Cause I can kind of picture it like it's a hug, like it's grabbing the washer so that when the magnets are pulling, again, it's just tightening that hug, where if you push the prongs open this way over time, they can eventually do this and pull right out. So personal preference aside, I'm going to go ahead and push them towards the center because I feel like that's the strongest. Then I might hit it with a mallet and um, cover it with some duct tape just to kind of seal this. This will also kind of soften any of these rough edges so it doesn't wear through to the other side. That's it. Now you just repeat the same exact process with the female portion of your snap. Moving right along, we're gonna go ahead and grab one of the interior main body liner pieces and the zipper overlay piece. So I've already added a layer of double-sided tape just below this edge here, just on the inside, because I'm gonna sew around the outer perimeter and I'd like as much as possible to keep my needle from not hitting tape. We are going to go ahead and measure one and a half inches down from the top edge, centered, and place this overlay down. Now I get a bunch of labels um, from a subscription program, so I love, <laughs> I'll add a label to anything in, anytime I can. So this one says cool status unlocked. I'm just gonna pop that under there before I go ahead and sew around this outer edge. Now, just like our magnetic snap, I'm gonna leave my thread tails long and pull them off to the back so it's one continuous stitch around the outer edge of this box. All right, so I'm back to my standard foot for this section. So I remove that zipper foot and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my seam, um, my stitch length back to what I normally sew it at. So. We're gonna go ahead and you can start anywhere on your zipper overlay. It's not gonna matter because like I said, it's gonna be a continuous stitch. So I'm gonna just start as close to the edge as possible, hold my thread tails so that I can keep them long and tie them off at the back. I do prefer to hand crank around these corners just so I can get a nice rounded stitch there. Now, just before I come upon this um, start of my stitching, I do want to give that gentle tug and pull the loop to the back. Then I'm going to go ahead and end right in that stitch that I started at. There we go. 
So knot it off and you get a nice pretty continuous stitch. Now we just need to cut away this, this inner portion of our overlay here. So I just fold it in half to get myself started. I'll flip it to the back side and snip up to that tape line. Make sure you do not cut your zipper overlay. The thing I love about waterproof canvas is, and sharp scissors is you can just kind of like rip it. <laughs> Here we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some double-sided tape along the black portion that you see here, but just above the cutout window because the next portion of stitching will be right along this um, the box there, and I'd like to keep my needle out of the double-sided tape. All right, we'll set this portion aside and we'll go ahead and grab the pocket liners and the, inch, the shorter zipper. Now, as I said before, I find this next step easier with the pull off. So that is how I'm choosing to show you guys. I have my center marks along the top of my zipper pocket. Um, if you're adding interfacing, I did keep it a good inch from the bottom. After you insert, um, install the zipper, uh, one of the edges will be a half inch longer and then it's just easier to tuck that edge and sew it closed without it being bulky through the pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and take some eighth inch double sided tape along the top edge of both my pieces. And then Peeling off that paper backing. I'm going to lay the zipper face up, center markings lined up, and press that in place. So I'm going to go sew a quarter inch along this edge, and then I'm going to repeat the same thing with this side, where again, we want the zipper right side face up and the, the print facing each other. So we'll center this on top just like this as well. And so this a quarter inch seam allowance so that when we add our zipper pull and we open up our zipper, we see a pretty interior. So I'm right-handed, I'm gonna go ahead and hold it in my right hand and you have to thread one side first, pull the other side on an angle, and then just kind of fiddle it until you could feel both of them going in equally. So you wanna make sure your edges are even. <laughs> that ain't it. <laughs> and give it another try. Right, you just want to make sure you don't have a bubble in the middle. Right now that's good. So I usually pull it as close to the left hand side as possible so I don't get confused which way I'm going because I like my zippers going from left to right. But there's no right or wrong way to do it. So now that we have this, we're going to go ahead and grab that interior liner with the overlay on it. I'm going to remove the bottom adhesive backing and we'll position that centered over the bottom to start. So. Make sure that your zipper is extending beyond the cutout box. We don't want to accidentally get it really close and off center. So make sure you're centering it on your zipper. And then by removing only one of the adhesive backing, it allows you to just take your time to position the bottom edge first before the top is also sticking to your zipper and everywhere else. So once I like that look of the positioning along the bottom, I'll remove the upper backing here and go ahead and position it. It's about an eighth inch from the teeth here. So 
So just make sure your zipper is not wavy. Take your time to position it to your liking. Once it looks good, now we can go ahead and move our zipper back over. And now we're gonna sew around the box, but not just in any order. To start, we do have to pull all the lining to the upside, top portion of your liner. So we're gonna start in this bottom right-hand corner. We're gonna drop our needle in here, leave our thread tails long. We're gonna just stitch along this bottom edge, leave the tails long again, and we're gonna knot them off. All right, so I've got my liners pulled up towards this straight edge, not towards the bottom. And I'm just gonna go ahead and position my needle right an eighth inch from the top of the box and also an eighth inch below this box. So liners are pulled and then I can go ahead and stitch across this bottom edge. Always stop with your needle down before you have to move anything. And stop an eighth inch beyond that end of the box. And pull your thread tails back. Knot them off. Now we've got this bottom edge sewn, so now I'm going to go ahead and push all of my lining down. So they're both going towards the bottom now. So where we left off in this bottom edge here, I'm going to lift up my foot as high as possible so that I can see where my last stitching was, and I'm going to go ahead and drop my needle in the end of that last stitch. Leave these thread tails long, and we're going to start the rest of the box. Anytime I want to be precise and I don't want to overshoot it, I will hand crank. And then I do turn it one more time and just go into the first bottom stitch. Leave those thread tails long, pull them to the back, and now you have a beautiful lined pocket without any raw zipper tape edges. I know it might be kind of hard to tell because I didn't interface this bottom portion, but you could see one of the liner pieces is a half inch longer. So I'm going to go ahead and trim it so it's now even with the top top layer. Now we want to go ahead and fold this bottom edge uh, 3 8 inches to the wrong side. So I'm just going to use double sided tape to hold that. So just fold that to the wrong side and we want the opposite side to match up, match up with it. There we go. All right, so now we need to sew up the sides of our pocket. So from the right side, we're going to go ahead and fold the panel over so it exposes this edge and we're going to go ahead and sew from here down here back stitch really well along the bottom edges because we will be turning the whole bag through this pocket then we're going to slide it over to this side and repeat the same process on this edge Now this zip bar pocket is all ready to go for the um, final turning. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it open so I don't accidentally forget. And also the bottom is left unsewn, but the edges are already turned so that it'll be ready to go at the end. 
for this next section, we're gonna prep the main zipper of the front zippered flap. So I've got my zipper tabs here. I did mark a seam allowance so that it's kind of easy to, to maintain that 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna lay it right sides facing on these raw edges here and repeat it with the other side. And we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and sew right on that line. Once we sew that line, we're gonna press it open and we're gonna encase the raw edge by folding it again and, sew, and flipping it towards the back and top stitching. We're not gonna add any length to our zipper by doing these folds, so it's gonna be exactly what we started with. So now we're going to press it away from that stitch line. We're going to fold this back end right here, kind of meeting up with the raw edge of the tape, and fold to encase that raw edge. So it should go just beyond the um, stitch line so that when you sew from the top, you will catch that fold. But this edge is butted up to my zipper, so again, we're not adding any length to the zipper. And now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. After you've added both zipper tab ends, go ahead and fold your zipper in half and mark the centers here, which I've already done. Now we need to stay oriented with our fabric, which one is the underside of the flap, which one is the top side, side of the flap, and if it's directional, all that comes into play right now. So as I've already mentioned, this does not have a directional print, so this front panel isn't so much important which way I choose to do this. So I have to just kind of decide now. And I'm gonna leave my zipper oriented along the bottom. We are essentially just making a straightforward zipper pouch, but the zipper's on the bottom, not on the top. And it will make a difference for your magnet and a directional print. So just stay oriented with the zipper along the bottom so you don't get confused. Trust me on this. Starting with the exterior portion of the flap, so this is what you're going to see on the bag. So there is no magnet sewn on here, so we already know we've got the right piece. It's going to fold over. This is going to be the bottom portion of the zipper. So I have already added some double-sided tape to this bottom edge. And like I said, I do like my zippers opening left to right, so I'm going to orient it this way with the zipper pull to the left. If you would prefer it this way, entirely up to you. There is no wrong or right way to install a zipper. So I'm just gonna open it a little bit and I'm gonna lay the center mark right sides facing. So my zipper is gonna go face down, line up those center marks and press the edge of the tape into the adhesive. You should have gaps on each side of your zipper. If it's coming to the edge, you did something wrong. You added length to your zipper or you cut your zipper to the wrong length. So make sure you did not add length to your zipper and that you cut it accurately. All right, so now that that is in place, if you don't want to use double-sided tape, you would just take the time to base this in place an eighth inch from the edge. But I'm using double-sided tape on both the exterior and the liner. I've chosen the one eighth inch so that it will remain out of my seam. So that is what I recommend if you do the tape route. So now we're gonna put right sides facing, sandwiching the zipper, we're gonna line up the edges and the tape here. So now I'm gonna go ahead into my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take the exterior portion and finger press it away from the zipper. We're gonna leave the lining towards us. We're just, we don't wanna top stitch through the lining. So once I give this a nice finger press, I'm gonna top stitch an eighth inch from this top edge where the seam allowance is going underneath the top stitching and we're not touching the lining. Now 
Now we can go ahead and finger press it down. Top portion is done. All right, I'm keeping the zipper again towards the bottom. This is the front portion, now this is the under portion. I did go ahead and lay some double-sided tape on the top part where our magnetic snap is. So we don't want to install this. It will put our magnetic snap in the wrong place. So now, um, now that I've got that oriented, I'm going to go ahead and flip it this way so that I can um, lay this down on top on the top portion of the zipper. Line up those center markings. Make sure it's lined up with the edge of the bottom piece as well. And we'll flip it over and then we'll add the lining. Back to the sewing machine, we're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to press the lining away from the, or the exterior away from the zipper, and we're going to leave the lining and all the other layers towards the bottom so it's unsewn. Alright, let's check that we're all on the same page. So this is the front. It's oriented correctly. I have my zipper pulled to the left. When you open up the flap, your magnet should be along the top. If you're doing well so far, we can go ahead and finish making this into a zipper pouch. Um, I occasionally like to put my label on this front flap, so I would want to do that before I sew up the sides. Another great place is um, on the back main body portion. I do also like it to be along the top. So if you want to add your label, I would add it now before moving on to the next steps. Alrighty, now we're going to go ahead and sew it up like a standard pouch. So we're going to go ahead and open it up and we're going to line up, to open your zipper, we're going to line up right sides facing of the exterior portion here and also the right sides facing of the liners. Now, when we get to the sides, you will see there's enough gap between the zipper tab and the edge. So we will not be catching our zipper tab in our stitching line. So we need to push the zipper tab towards the lining. And that's also why we did not sew through this. So it naturally, these naturally want to line up and we're not getting resistance because this isn't tacked down under and you'll get a big bubble. So we're going to line up those edges first push the tab towards the lining, line up the seam there and clip and then clip the remaining edge here. So we're going to go ahead and go to our sewing machine and I'm going to go ahead and swap out to my narrow foot or zipper foot again so I can get as close to the zipper tab without catching it so I can ride right up against it. We're going to go ahead and switch our seam allowances between the exterior portion we're sewing and the lining portion, however, so be mindful of that. So once we get to our sewing machine, we're going to use our standard 3 8 inch seam allowance until we get to the tab, and then we're going to angle out to a half inch seam allowance on the lining portion. So we'll repeat that over here, 3 8 inches, and angle out to a half inch over there. So for this portion, this is the exterior, I'm maintaining my uh, 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I've got my narrow foot on. So you can feel the zipper tab there and it's getting kind of bulky, so that's why we want this narrow foot. Just going to kind of backstitch over that area. 
Now that I'm past the zipper tab, like I said, I'm gonna angle out to a half inch over here. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay, now if you want, you can go ahead and trim off a little bit of the lining, but we're not going to really um, trim much up here because I want to be able to press that seam allowance open. I got a bunch of tape on my scissors. All right, so we're going to do our best to finger press this seam portion open as well as this side. If you want to take an iron and press the seam open, that would help too. But again, we want to focus right here and make sure that we're, we're pressing that area open well. If you've ever made our crystal convertible bag, it's kind of very similar how we do that side seam. So make sure you press these open. And now we're going to go ahead and turn our zipper pocket through the open zipper here. And we're going to focus on trying to keep these areas like folded perfectly in half as we do that. Just kind of pinching from within, holding them together and turning them right side out. So as you can see right now, we've got these dented corners that are not pretty, but that's not our end goal. We are not done. So we're gonna go ahead and stick our hand in here and push up zipper tab and the side seam out. So I'm going to take a screwdriver here. I'm going to go just under because there is that little hole. Remember we didn't catch our zipper tab in the seam. So I'm just going to push that up as we finger press this portion open. Just like that on the one side. Now, you shouldn't have any dented corners. It should look really nice. We're going to go ahead and smooth out this top edge by pulling it nice and taut along that edge. Now, if there's a little bit of um, a short side, so I can see I have a little bit more of my exterior on that side, I'm going to go ahead and pull it tight, and I will trim that up so all layers are even but this is a good opportunity to kind of smooth everything out inside with your hand and give it a press with an iron trim up that edge just a smidge so that they're all equal and then we'll baste these edges shut an eighth inch from the edge so I went ahead and trimmed it up just a smidge I did not take much off just enough to even those up I did sew an eighth inch from the edge now just to make sure we caught all layers we're just going to give it an open peek inside looks good all right so now we're going to take this piece and the exterior main fabric back piece so it does not have the sewn magnet on it we're working with the opposite piece here so we're going to go ahead and lay um, and orient it correctly in front of us we've got our center notch here we've got our center notch here we're going to flip the flap so that the magnet is face up and we are going to line up those top edges and clip in place I'm gonna go ahead and attach the flap to this piece by sewing on that same stitching line across the top. 
I just attached it by just sewing on across that same line. So now we gotta sew up all the darts on our pieces. So for the exterior main body pieces, we're gonna maintain that 3 8 inch seam allowance. And we're gonna go ahead and fold the darts right sides facing, lining up those edges, and sew it a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do that for all four darts on the main body exterior. Now before you jump into the lining darts, we are gonna take a half inch seam allowance on this. We want the lining to fit more snugly into the um, main body without being baggy. So fold the darts the same way, right sides together, and do a half inch seam allowance. Got all the darts sewn, so we're gonna go ahead and trim down those seam allowances to an eighth inch on each of them. All right, for the next step, we're gonna go ahead and leave the flap, the zippered flap portion up out of the way, but we're gonna lay the main body exteriors facing each other and lining up the edges. So I'm gonna clip these top edges together. Then I'm gonna clip the bottom centers, right sides facing followed by the darts on each side. So I will typically kind of lay them in opposite directions to reduce bulk as we come around that corner. And then as we sew around those darts, I will backstitch a few times because we will be trimming down the seam allowance on this portion and we don't want to um, weaken that seam. So make sure you backstitch a couple times as you go over the, each of those darts. All right, we're gonna repeat this with the lining pieces as well, but for this portion, we are doing a 3 8 inch seam allowance on just these three sides. We will leave the top edge unsewn. And for the lining, we are gonna take the full half inch seam allowance. You do not need to grade it towards the top where you come out to the 3 8 and then increase it to a half inch because the flap and the D-ring tabs take up bulk around that perimeter. So go ahead and just take the full half inch seam allowance along the lining portion. All right, so I'm starting with the main body here, the exterior. So I'm gonna do the 3 8 inch seam allowance for this portion. We're leaving this top edge unsewn. coming up to this bottom dart here. So again, once I'm sewing over it, I will be backstitching a few times. Now do the same thing with your liner at a half inch seam allowance. Now when I sew the lining portion, I do like to sew with the zipper pocket face up so that I don't accidentally catch it in my seam. So sew with it this side up. So now we need to trim down our seam allowances, but we're gonna start about a half inch from the top. So don't cut all the way to the top, but cut, trim it down to about an eighth inch seam allowance.
stopping an inch from the top. We're going to do that same process with this exterior portion. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add some double-sided tape to these little tabs and um, press them open. I do that to the um, exterior as well as the lining. This is why we don't trim this spot down. Just like that, press your seam open. So do that on all four of these top little tabs. Got all of these side seams pressed open. I'm going to go ahead and tuck the flap now inside this bag. I do need to take the uh, D-ring tab portion here and we're going to go ahead from the inside portion here. We're going to line this with the D-ring portion face down into the bag and we're going to place this line right at the top edge here. So you're gonna center it over the seam, line up that line, and clip in place. I'm gonna do the same thing with the opposite D-ring. Find my line, line it up with the top edge, centered over the seam, and clip. So I'll just do this off camera. I'll go ahead and just sew an eighth inch from the edge, tacking these in place. But for the lining portion, we're gonna go ahead and turn this so the right side is on the outside. We are almost done, guys. All right. Should look like this. Verify your zipper is open because we are going to be sewing the top portion here shortly. So I've just tacked the D-rings in place. So now this is wrong side is on the outside, the right side is on the outside. So we're gonna take the zipper pocket and we're gonna turn it towards the flap and insert it inside the bag here. Tuck it as deep as it'll go here. And then we're gonna line up the center marks here on the front and the back side of the bag here. Then we're gonna line up the side seams here. Clip that in place. But as you can see, now we're dealing with these layers and these layers. So you just want to be mindful of your um, interfacing and materials if you are sewing on a domestic machine or making this bag for the first time. Okay. So once you've gotten those four landmarks clipped, then you can ease in the rest. You don't ever want to start at one spot and then just clip around in a circle because things will shift. It's just inevitable and it happens all the time, no matter how careful you are. So always find those four landmarks, then clip in between. All right, so now that we've got our clips, we're gonna go ahead and take it to our sewing machine and we're gonna lay it um, on the top of our sewing machine and then just sew a 3 8 inch in the round here. If you have one of those machines where you can remove the arm, so like you're sewing a sleeve or something, and you can slip it on the top, then you can sew from the outside in the round. My machine doesn't, the arm doesn't come off, so I'm just gonna sew from the inside very carefully as I turn it around.
Okay, so now's the time that you want to take a look at your top stitching. If you see that there's any jagged edges, because you are, especially if you're sewing from the inside, sometimes it can get caught and you end up with jagged edges. Now would be the time to go ahead and smooth it out so you have a nice uh, clean edge here. So um, we're going to go ahead and pull the lining portion out of the inside of this exterior portion of the bag. Pull it out just like that. And now you should have left your pocket unzippered. So now you can go ahead and reach in and turn everything through this hole. So now we've got the right sides out. We're just gonna tuck the lining back into the bag here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, and push our hands into the deep corners here where the darts are and really push it deep into the bag here. So I've not sewn my zipper pocket shut yet. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch first, but you do wanna make sure that your zipper pocket liners are pushed down right now. They're not caught up in this top stitching yet. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of finger press the seam and I may clip it so that they're all nice and lined up here. But we really don't want any of the lining popping up, so we wanna take our time to get these edges nice and lined up. Again, because I cannot take the arm off of my machine, I don't have a cylinder arm, I'm gonna turn the bag so the lining is outside and then sew from the top portion for my final top stitching. But if you have where you can take it off, you can leave it like this and sew an eighth inch around. As you come upon this part, you want to make sure you're giving it good tension so that um, you don't have any rolled portion of your lining popping up or any portion of this catching. So make sure you give it good tension so that we pull it away from the bag. All right, so just like um, before, I'm going to go ahead and leave my thread tails long and I'm going to pull them to the back side. Now, this is the back of the bag, so I will pull the threads to the back of the bag. So when you look in, you're not going to see my black thread knotted off on my lilac um, lining. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and pull this zipper flap away so that this is not rolling in any way. And then I'm going to go ahead and just sew in the circle. I'll probably have to be extra careful around my D-rings because of that bulk. I may hand crank that. If you're concerned about that, you could always start and stop before this and add a couple of rivets. Um, one of my testers did that. Um, she was having trouble with her machine at the time, but that's an option. Just finished the top stitching and I did not do any back stitching here. I pulled the threads to the back because uh, this will be the part that's against your body. Nobody would see it anyway. But we cannot forget to close our zipper pocket. So remember we left that undone. So we have to pull those through the, the zipper opening. 
line up those edges and then we're just gonna sew this shut, tuck it back into our pocket and then our bag will be done. All right, just sewn that hole closed. So you're gonna go ahead and tuck it back down deep into your bag. I'll have to push those corners flat inside there. Okay. Oh, look at that pop of pretty. Close up your bag there. Ready? Ready? Oh, that's so nice. Don't forget to add your strap because we already made it. So we can be officially done. Oof, you did it guys, great job.